Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. Today we're having a look at the NYX Globes by Astera. So just to give you a quick run through on the capabilities of these globes, they are colour tunable for 1750 Kelvin all the way up to 20,000 Kelvin. You can add plus minus green to that and you can saturate in a colour to any Kelvin. They also have built in Lumen Radio DMX, so let's take a look. All right, so before we get into too much detail, I just want to point out that Astera did send me the product we were reviewing today. They also sent me a COVID-19 mask and they also sent me a hat. So for the benefit of the young and cool people at Astera, I just want to point something out. When you get to my age, if you've still got a full head of hair, you don't wear a hat, you try to show it off. All right, so where to start? Okay, so if you're an Australian or New Zealand gaffer, here's something that's gonna get you very excited. Finally, somebody's made a smart globe that comes in bayonet. Now, the other thing that's news with these is as of a recent firmware update, you no longer need the Astera box to talk to your globe if you're using the phone app. Prior to that, you needed the Astera box to talk to your phone, and then this would send the communication out to all of your Astera product. Now, you can use one of these instead of the Astera box. There is a catch though, however, this only transmits about one third the distance. So it gets about 100 meters, whereas this got you about 300 meters. Now, uh, the next thing I wanna point out is I'm not gonna get into the phone app because I did that in a previous video talking about the Titan tubes. So it is exactly the same phone app. So there'll be a link to that episode down below. And also I won't be talking about the color render on these because that is also covered in the Titan video because this is the same light engine. All right, so let's talk about price. So an individual globe will sell for 220 Australian dollars, which is about 105 US dollars. Now, how much money you wanna spend is up to you. You can get big kits like boxes of eight. They sell for about 2,150 Australian dollars, which is about 1,150 US dollars. You can also customize kits because pretty much everything is available individually. What I'm gonna do, for example, is I'm gonna buy one of these cases that can take eight globes and accessories. I'm gonna buy four of these bayonets and four of the Edisons. And then I'd round the kit out with a few accessories like this control box. Now I just wanna talk about the control box for a while because there's a bit of confusion about what the control box is for. So for example, if you've got eight bulbs, you don't need eight control boxes. So the best way to explain the control box is to talk about the bulbs and what the bulbs don't have. For example, the bulbs do not have a screen and menu control buttons. All right, so let's put this controller to use and paint a scenario. Okay, so we're using this as a practical light on set. We're not using Lumen Radio DMX to control it and we're not using a phone app. All we wanna do is change the CCT or the brightness of one light, we just wanna control it manually, nice and simple. Okay, so let's go across to these globes. So all I do is plug in my controller. And now I've got full manual control. So I can change the CCT for example. Now when I've done making my changes, I just disconnect the globe and the globe remembers my settings. Now, something I just quickly wanna point out, I'm not gonna go through the menu system in this video either, because I've already done that in the Titan video. But something I wanna point out is the menu system here doesn't just drive your white light mode, it also drives your color mode. And to give you some idea of the controls you've got with these globes, the globes also have built in Lee and Roscoe gels libraries. All right, so let's go through another scenario where the controller can come in handy. All right, so in this scenario, we wanna take our globe, put it into the ceiling and run it off DMX. So these globes don't have an internal battery, but they do run off external DC power. The controller has a battery in it that'll run the controller and simultaneously run a globe. So I can plug the globe in and do my setup without having to plug the globe into AC. Now when I power up the globe, on the display comes up all my settings, so I can see what I need to change. So in this case, I need to change the globe to DMX, and I need to change my DMX address. Now I can check over my DMX if this is working. When I disconnect the globe, all the settings are saved in it, it's now ready to plug into my ceiling, and off we go. Now technically, you don't even need one of these. 
Everything I've done so far can be done over the phone app, but me personally, I'd rather have something that's hardwired and has buttons on it just in case my phone app goes down. Now the other use for this is as a mount. It has rails all over it and you can mount the globe and other accessories. You can get things like spigots and even hooks. So for example, we could mount this on a C-stand now in a Chinese lantern and run off the internal battery. Now the controller even has magnets. All right, now let's start talking about the bulbs. Each bulb has a light engine that consists of red, green, blue, mint, and amber. There's no white emitters, but luckily enough of those emitters that it has are a broad enough spectrum that you can mix it together and generate really good white light. You're typically looking at TM30 color scores of 92, 93 plus. Now, in terms of the CCT accuracy, they are staggeringly accurate because when they make these globes, there's actually 14 watt of LED inside these in total, and then after calibration, they take that down to 10 watt. So they use that additional four watt of leeway to make sure that the globes actually match up. Now, in terms of your CCT range, you've got a massive CCT range from 1,750 Kelvin all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin. Now that's if you're using DMX, if you're operating the units manually via the controller, you can go from 10,000 Kelvin up to 20,000 Kelvin in 1,000 Kelvin increments. Now let's talk about colors, and that's where these things really hero, because they're not RGB. Because they've got additional color emitters, you get a larger range of fully saturated colors. Now this isn't really noticeable, until you start trying to mix in lights that are RGB. Lights that only have RGB seem to lack vibrancy. Now where these lights also hero is when you're trying to mix in white light. So you've got your colored light and you wanna mix white light in with it as well. Most lights that are RGB WW will have what's called a HSI mode where you can select a color hue and then mix that with white light. However, with the vast majority of those fixtures, you can only mix to daylight white. Whereas with these, you can select your CCT, your color temperature, you can even select a plus minus green and then add the color hue. So I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna to go to a full saturated color and show you where this can come in really, really handy. So at the moment, I've got these set up with an amber in them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start mixing in 5,600 Kelvin white light. Now, so we've got 50% uh, 5,600 Kelvin white light and 50% colored light. Now, this is where this comes in super handy. Let's say you want to cool this down. Well, I can change my Kelvin from 5,600 Kelvin. I can raise it up and I've got a huge Kelvin range. So I can go all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin and cool it down. Now, vice versa, I can go all the way down to 1,750 Kelvin and warm up that color if you want to. Now, one thing I almost forgot to mention is how bright these are. So currently they're running at 30% brightness so you can see some color in them. But at full brightness, they're the equivalent of about 60 watts of incandescent light. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is the DMX, how smooth the wireless DMX control is. So I'm just gonna program in a five second fade to black. Watch how smooth these things kiss black at the end. How smooth is that? Extremely smooth. All right, so let's go to two and a half seconds now and see if we get any, uh, any jittering at two and a half seconds. Now, two and a half seconds is usually uh, the point at which I test uh, most uh, film lights too. I don't go past two and a half seconds because most film lights will jitter. So that was smooth as. Let's go to uh, one second. Okay, here we go. One second fade down. One second fade up. Okay, incredibly smooth. Let's just get to the point. Let's go to quarter of a second. Smooth, no problem at all. Okay, and let's have a look at how they respond to on-off. 
Now here's a little accessory that I like. It's called a cup bounce. Now you can buy a packet of eight of these for $55. They're also included in some of the larger kits. Now here's the problem with smart globes. You don't have any light emitters down the bottom here. So if you've got this in a little bedside table lamp, you don't get a lot of light down here. But the cup bounce bounces light down into that area. Now let's have a look at what I consider to be the only real negative with these bulbs, and that is they don't have an internal battery. So I asked Astira, why is that? So the answer they gave me is best to explain by having a look at another smart bulb that does have an internal battery. Now to have an internal battery, you've got to have a wider base. So that makes sense. Now the next thing is cooling. Keeping the battery cool is a real problem. Not just the heat generated from the battery, but the heat generated from the LEDs can affect the battery. So you need to get rid of that heat. So the only way you can really do that is to have a heat sink design like this thing has and air vents. Now the problem with all that is it no longer looks like a domestic bulb. Now the next problem with having the air vents is you don't have an IP rating. So that leads us uh, to the next advantage of these bulbs is they have an IP44 rating. And that's if you have the plug in the DC inlet. Now if you have a festoon that has an IP rating, so it has gasket connections, you can use these out in the rain. Now you can run these things off batteries via the DC inlet. So you can run it off the controller here, that'll give you three hours. You can run it off the uh, a USB battery pack. You could even run it off a DTAP because it's five to 18 volts in. But none of those options really work if you're trying to run it inside a lampshade. I mean, you might be able to hide a USB battery pack behind the base if you're lucky, but the majority of the time, you won't be able to do that. So here's a battery solution that I'm using on set. We already have a power cable coming out the back of the light, and that looks normal because, well, it is normal. So I run that to a little inverter system that runs off a V-mount battery. So this is made by Tether Tools. So I have a separate video on that, a link will be down below. Now here's the problem with this, it does have a cooling fan, so about once every five minutes, this sounds like a jumbo jet taking off. So before we go, I just wanted to show you what you can do with the app. So this is an Astera bulb running with an Astera tube. Right, that's another review done. See you next week on Gaffer and Gear. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.